Hey everybody, welcome back to NeuroPsyQ, the best place on YouTube to increase your neuroscience IQ. Thanks for joining us again for another week's video. This week we're going to be talking about something that is probably interesting for all the sports fans and athletes that are visiting our channel, and that is the home field advantage. For those of you that have never heard of this before, the home field advantage is an advantage that is experienced by athletes when they play a game on their home turf or their home ice or at their home baseball diamond. Now, we're going to be talking about some of the psychological reasons why this might be happening and we're going to look at some statistics that show whether or not the home field advantage is actually significant. So sit tight, stay tuned, let's roll the intro. Alright, let's get straight into it. So we're talking about the home field advantage. First of all, you probably want to know whether or not the home field advantage is actually something that we have observed. And it actually is. Since the 70s when studies first began on the home field advantage, statistics have suggested that teams perform better when they play on their home facility. And so, it's actually been shown in most studies that greater than 50 to 70% of the games played at home are won. But we want to know why this is happening. Why are teams performing better on their home turf? Well, lots of things have been suggested. One of the first suggestions is that this is where the team practices, so they're used to that environment. They know their field, they practice there, they're used to it they have that psychological advantage of being at home. Now studies have actually shown that in athletes that were tested before a home game, their testosterone levels were higher than baseline. So this is comparing baseline, which would be a practice, compared to a home game and then compared to an away game. And when they had a home game, their testosterone was higher. And this is associated with things like aggressiveness and social dominance. So maybe being on the home field allows them to feel like they are protecting their home turf in a territorial kind of way. But a weird finding was actually that cortisol levels were higher when they played on their home turf compared to when they played on an away game. But they weren't higher than baseline, it was just that when the players went to play an away game, their cortisol levels dropped. Scientists proposed that maybe the high levels of cortisol during practice was because of intra-team competition. So within the team, teammates compete to be on the starting lineup and to prove themselves to the coach. Then, maybe the cortisol is higher because when they play a home game, they have their fans there supporting them and it's more of a stressful situation. Away games might not be as stressful just in the fact that they have less fans to impress and it doesn't seem as important that they win. There's less pressure on them winning even though most athletes are competitive and want to win anyway, but it's not like they are winning for their fans that are watching them. That's what the scientists propose. Well, another interesting finding was that anxiety was actually higher for the athletes at away games. Now, let's talk a little bit about stress. Stress is important. We actually need stress to be successful. Now we always think about stress in a negative manner and nobody wants to be stressed, but you need a certain amount of stress for optimal performance. And this is according to the Yerkes-Dodson Law. So the Yerkes-Dodson Law says that if you don't have enough stress, then you have not enough attention and interest in something to perform well. So for instance, if you go into an exam and you're not stressed at all, well, how much do you really care about that exam? To perform well enough? Maybe not enough. Or if you go to play a soccer game and you're not stressed about it, then 
again, your attention levels are going to be lower, your dedication to it is probably lower, so are you going to do well? Probably not. But if your stress is higher at the optimal level, then your attention is at its peak and you will have optimal performance. If you start to become too anxious though, that is when we have impaired performance from anxiety. So things like anxiety attacks or being too anxious to make the right decision comes into play and that can influence athletes as well. So talking about the Yerkes Dodson law, we actually want to look at a stat that shows that athletes, while they do perform better on their home turf, if it's a high pressure scenario, the home field advantage flips and they actually do worse. And this is probably because of the Yerkes Dodson law. If this is a final game and they're so stressed, but they are on their home turf too. Now they have the added stress of all their fans being there to support them. If they're too stressed, they're not going to perform at the optimal levels. We've So this reverse has been shown in things like the NHL Finals or the seventh game of the World Series, where these are high stress games, very important, and the home field advantage doesn't really matter anymore. So what else could be a reason why there's home field advantage? One of the reasons is travel. If you have to travel to a totally different time zone and adapt to that time zone and then go ahead and play a basketball game, a soccer game, a hockey game, well, the team that's already lived there and been there and adjusted to that time zone has that advantage over you. Another thing with travel is the elevation or the altitude. So if a city is at a higher altitude, then the athletes aren't acclimatized to that altitude and it's going to be harder for them to perform as well as they usually do. In one of our videos about wearing face masks and hypoxia, we talk about how the body adapts to different elevations and the ventilatory acclimatization to hypoxia that occurs. So this is something that would have to occur in athletes. Interestingly enough, Denver is the highest altitude city in the NBA and their home field advantage is the greatest of all the teams in the NBA. So when we look at individual teams and their home field advantage, the way they calculate it is they look at their wins at home compared to their wins away. And Denver has a greater difference in comparison, and the proposed reason is that it is such a high altitude city that for the other teams coming in, they have to adjust and acclimatize to this high altitude while they're playing. And so being at a high altitude can lead to things like nausea and headaches, dizziness, and so players that are experiencing these symptoms will probably not perform as well as they could. But interestingly, another thing that has been seen is that it's not the crowd. Booing doesn't seem to have an effect on players. They are pretty good at blocking it out. It doesn't change the player stats. But while the audience doesn't influence the players, it seems that the audience might influence the refs. So at home, the referees seem to have a bias towards their home team. Now, referees are impartial but what happens is the fans in the stands can influence the decisions they make. It's a high pressure position actually to be a ref and making these snap judgments and snap calls. What happens is the social pressures from the fans can influence the decision that a referee makes. In fact, in one paper that examined the statistics, 22% of the home edge came from extra shots given by the referees. Now with that being said, the home field advantage is actually on a decline. And they think that this may be because of instant replay that allows the referees to make a decision that's not as rapid, but also the fact that now coaches are allowed to challenge the referee's decision. This has led to a trend in which the home field advantage is now declining. So that brings to question, what's going to happen now 
that there is no audience with the COVID-19 epidemic. If you've been watching sports such as the NHL or the NBA now that they're back on TV, you may have noticed the empty stands. I was watching the other day, I don't know if it was hockey or basketball, but in the stands they had put cardboard cutouts of fans. Obviously this is not the same, but the other thing is all the players are training at the same location that they are playing. Right? So all the hockey players are at the two hubs for the NHL and they're all playing players that have been there, acclimatized to that location. They're all in the same time zone. So will there really be a home field advantage now? Probably not. But it's going to be interesting to see what the stats show at the end of the season. The same thing goes for the NBA. Now all the basketball players are, I believe, at Disney. They're all in the same time zone. They're all playing on the same courts. So again, are we going to eliminate the home field advantage? Without fans in the stands to influence the referee's snap judgments, then the other team isn't going to have an advantage. Is it the audience influencing the players or is it the audience influencing the refs? Depends. The audience can influence the players. We talked about the Yerkes Dodson law, which is a psychological law that has to do with stress. But also, people do perform better when they're being watched. And there have been countless studies where people go to the gym and work out, and it shows that they work out harder if there are people watching them. So, will the teams? try less hard now that they have no audience. That's also questionable. These are professional athletes and they have been training all their lives to probably just ignore the fans and ignore the booing going on in the stands. But at the same time, can't the cheering help them? Can the cheering push them to do better? This is something we'll keep an eye out now with the pandemic when we're giving this interesting scenario of having sports without an audience. So the two psychological factors that we learned today that could be influencing the home advantage are number one, the Yerkes Dodson Law, which was that arc that has low stress, high stress or optimal stress, and then high stress with low performance. The second thing is the spectator effect in which the audience or having an audience can force you to perform better or push you to do better because it kind of creates this dual lens. You have an image of yourself, but then you have the image of what you think other people see you as. So I'll use an example of my younger brother. If he's outside shooting hoops, fooling around, he will sit there and try all these weird things. Doesn't really care if it goes in the hoop or not. He'll be like throwing it backwards just to see what he can do. But if his friends are over, that's when he really starts to try and prove that he's a good basketball player. This is something that we've probably all noticed. If I go to the gym and I'm working out in public, then I become aware of other people watching me. So I try to look like I know what I'm doing. But if I'm working out at home, I don't try as hard because it's just me. Nobody's there to hold me accountable for it. Interestingly enough, on a side note, they did a study where people were working out without mirrors and with mirrors and found that with a mirror, they also worked out harder. Because then you have this kind of dual lens where you think you know what you're doing, but then you actually see what you're doing, so you're judging yourself as well. Anyway, I hope you learned a little bit today about why some teams might be performing better at home, but how this effect has been lessened over the years. One example of that is just last year in 2019 when Washington won the baseball series and all of the games were played away and they won all seven games, I believe. So. Is the home field advantage real? Yes, the statistics have shown that it is real, but it's also on the decline because we are reducing bias with referees with the new instant replays and the new 
rules that allow coaches to second guess a referee's call. Anyway, that's it. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, leave them down below. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And I want to know if you think that there will be any sort of advantage, any sort of home field advantage with the new world of sports that we're seeing in the COVID-19 pandemic. So I believe one of the hot spots this year is Toronto for the NHL and Vancouver. Do you think those teams will perform better than the other teams because they're on their home turf? Or do you think it's not going to matter because now everybody's in the same city? Same goes for the NBA and I'm not too sure what's going on with NFL, but maybe they're doing something similar if they're still playing. Anyway, <laughs> like, comment, subscribe. See you next week.